Well, it doesn't matter where you are and where you're joining us from around the world. We're all in the same situation. This is a podcast with a difference because we all expect it to be down the tubes. And instead, we're in our own homes doing crazy stuff. My name's Alex. I'm a professional nosy parker. I'm a huge fan of the London Underground. And I have the most stellar cast of people to give you a bit of information about our wonderful London Underground system, get your questions answered and get a few tidbits of gossip along the way. And I want to introduce you to those people now. First of all, Chris Nix is in his garden shed. Quite an impressive garden shed, it has to be said. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex. Yeah, it's uh, specially converted into the broadcast bunker uh, for the London Hangouts. It looks beautiful. And City Holloway, equally, author, historian of the London Underground. You're not even from London, you're from Iceland. I know. Well, that's just the beauty of London. It draws people from all over the world and particularly the tube, you know, unites us all. So uh, uh, I'm here in my little hidden London cubby hole in my house in London. You look great. And Laura, Laura Hilton Brown, you look like you're in a sort of home set of a really posh house. It looks gorgeous. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a posh house, but I've, I've done my best to kind of equal City and Chris's little kind of hidden London cubbies going on here. Well, you look fantastic. I feel very underdressed. I can say I've got a massive clock here just to make sure that we're all going to know what time we're running. I've got a candelabra, if you'd prefer. I could actually put a bit of that up. And actually, I think I do need a bit of greenery. So I thought I might just drag in a little pot plant, if that helps, so we can have a little bit of a plant there. Does that look a little better? A little more welcoming. Um, the idea of this uh, Hidden London Hangout, as we're calling it, is that you get the chance to have a drink and sit back and listen to us and learn a little bit along the way. I can say that I'm on the softies today in a very... Well, you, you'll know the font, guys. You'll know the typeface that I've got on my mug because it's a very I, much a tube font. I was going to say, I've been admiring your Johnson from here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very nice. Go, <laughs> all the boys say that. Uh, Siddy, have you got a drink there? I do. I have coffee in my one of my favorite. I collect these mugs. They are um, Moomin mugs, which is a Finnish cartoon. So I've got quite a few of these. We remember the Moomins from our childhood very well in the UK. And Laura, what have you got there in yours? Do you know what? I've got, I've got a chai, which is lovely. And it's rather faded, but you can probably, it says a um, world-class Jew for a world-class city. So I'm trying to be on brand with that, but it is a bit faded, sorry. I love it. I love a good mug. I love a good mug. Now, one of the ways that we're going to teach you about what we do is to tell you a little about our favorite bits of the London Underground. The first question, guys, we all have a favorite tube station. For me, it's got to be Kentish Town because it's where I used to get off the tube to go and see my lovely, lovely late great nan and granddad. It's also where my very first crush came from because I used to be completely smitten with a guard on the Northern Line. And I used to wait at Kentish Town in the vain hope that this guard would come through on the train and take me to wherever I needed to go. So Kentish Town has always got a real thing for me. Whenever I go there, I feel very much loved and part of London. Chris, have you got a favourite? Um, yeah, I used to, when I first moved to London, I used to live in West Hampstead and a station not very far from there is still very dear to my heart, uh, St John's Wood. Uh, always admired its uh, style uh, and its looks. Uh, and even the, the light box that we we have here is uh, reminiscent of the ones that you'll find there. Um, so yeah, that'd be mine, St John's Wood. And St John's Wood is a station that's got those amazing brass uplighters up the escalators, hasn't it? They look stunning. I could do with a couple of those up my staircase. <laughs> yeah, alas, not in the decommissioned originals range. Um, yeah, they uh, they really are stunning, those, and a number of stations have them, even more used to have them. Places like Piccadilly Circus used to have a fine uh, row of them until they were they were replaced. But yeah, they, it's a, a really good looking station, I think. City, down there in the corner of my screen, what's your favourite tube station and why? Oof, it's a very tricky question to answer, I think, because quite a few pop up in my mind and I'd say you know almost every station that I used frequently because I maybe lived nearby it always carry a kind of special sort of place in my heart but funnily enough I'm going to probably say uh Leicester Square I mostly because Good. 
I Good choice. remember it really vividly from when I first came to London and uh, and it sort of is just kind of very uh, almost emblematic of London I think Leicester Square and a quiz question there are certain parts of that station which are still hidden from view and there is a predominant colour on the very old tiles do you remember what the colour is <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's a wicked yeah. question, isn't it? Alex, it's a wicked question. It's green. And the um, reason I ask is because Mr. Nix, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chris Nix, who is our uh, man in the shed, um, took me down to Leicester Square and he took me to one of the emergency spiral staircases and we saw the tile work. Um, do you remember what the colour is? Oh, yes, oh. It's, it's green uh, and cream are the predominant colours there. Eh? Yeah. And it's beautiful and there is actually a cupboard on the northbound northern line platform where if you open it there's still the tiles the original tiles in that cupboard it's amazing even though the rest of the station has been uh, has been renovated and um, laura same question to you my lovely what's your favorite station and why is there a bit of london that just tugs at your heartstrings do you know what alex i love this question because I think everybody's got a favourite station um, or stations, which leads me on to my answer because I'm going to be super greedy and I'm going to take quite a few, so I'm sorry. I'm going to say work. because um, I love Waterloo Bridge and my commute home used to be walking over the bridge and then jumping on the train at Waterloo and whatever season it was walking over that bridge, looking left or right, loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, I'm going to take a little cluster of stations around Kennington and Oval because I, that's the first place that I lived when I moved down from um, the north to the south and went straight to South London as well and I've kind of remained there ever since. Um, and then my third one, which is kind of a bit personal and professional, is Aldwych. Um, we put an event on there back in 2010 and it's just stuck in my heart since then. So that's a, that's a massive, massive plus for me. Do you know, there is so much to go at from your answer and I don't know where to start because it's almost as if we planned this. It's all too seamless because our big topic today is Aldwych Station. But before we go there, I have to ask you this question. Have you ever ridden the Kennington Loop? Me? Yes. No, I haven't. And I've, that's actually, that's actually, yeah, I'd like to, but no, I haven't. We need to do this. The Kennington Loop, guy. we've actually, Chris, explain to us the Kennington Loop. So Kennington Loop is uh, a reversing loop. There, there used to be uh, used to be others on the on the tube, but it was a way of just turning the trains round uh, without having to take the driver from one end of the train to the other. Um, to answer your question, Alex, no, I I've never written it either, but I did get to do something amazing a couple of years ago um, as part of the Northern Line extension construction. They've had to build a step plate junction to connect onto the Kennington Loop. So uh, we took a group of the museum patrons there uh, when they had dug up to the outside of it and we could stand on the outside of the tunnel and put our hands on it while the trains were, were kind of running inside the tunnel still. So I've not been in it, but I've been on the outside of it. And this, this extension you're talking about is the bit to Battersea, isn't it? It's going to be open. That's right, so... Nine Elms and Battersea, yeah. yeah. And so they're going to knock a hole in the side of the tunnel and put another track they, in there really that's right they've already done it they uh they've knocked a hole on the side of the tunnel built set points uh so that the trains can either go around the loop or um or come out and onto the extension and go to Battersea and for punters like you and me uh, the Kennington loop really is where trains say this train terminates at Kennington via Charing Cross and instead of getting off as you're meant to at Kennington, you're really naughty and you stay on and you just go round again. And that's, that's the not allowed. Loop. You're not allowed to do it. <laughs> not allowed. Done no. it, haven't we? <laughs> See, but if, yeah, if I'd have known you could do that, then maybe I would have done. Oh, it's wonderful, <laughs> but so not right. Anyway, we're talking about Aldwych today. Um, and it's really interesting that, Laura, you mentioned it. It's really also interesting that, and, and thank you very much for all the interest that's been shown in this already. I am bowled over, and so are we all, actually, at how much you guys are up for this. And we really want to make this great for you. So thank you so much. A guy called John Gelson messaged me and said, the closed former chief station, which has always interested me, is Aldwych. I went on a tour of it several years ago after it closed, organised by the London Transport Museum. 
And I have questions for you. Well, there's two actually. Why was it built at the end of a short branch off the Piccadilly line? And why did it close? Where do we start? Laura, you <laughs> mentioned it's your favorite station. Why? I think it's, well, it's one of my favorite stations for sure. And I think um, it's, it's, it boils down to when we did an event uh, in collaboration with the GLA. And it was uh, a commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the Blitz. And we did an event down um, at Aldwych Station. I think it was about, it was 2010. And it was the first, it was the first event I did and kind of project managed for the museum. Um, and we did an immersive um, kind of theatrical piece. Um, it was only kind of a three or four day event, but it got so much interest and the public really loved the event. And we put our heart and soul into this event because it's really important for us to do well. Um, and it was, it was fantastic. Um, and it kind of, it opened up the station, I think to a level that we hadn't done it before. And it made us realize the museum that, that this, you know, this could be um, kind of long-term. We could, we could find other stations, we could find other venues and do it. And it's, it's kind of where the idea for Hidden London was born, um, you know, way back in, way back in 2010. And um, yeah, so I think that's why it's special for me anyway. And it's a station that's got so much inherent history that the original lifts from 1907 are still there even though they're not in use i believe um yeah. from 1907 made by otis as i recall and uh, a lot of the fittings and fixtures in that old station mm. are still there as well and what's really curious to a lot of londoners is why it's called aldwich and yet the station on the front of it says strand chris yeah and i I've actually got some photos to share if you want to see them. Oh, this is great. So this is our new feature for these very special Hidden London Hangouts. This is Siddy's slideshow. And Siddy has got a series of pictures that you are gonna love because they'll take us into this tube station and a few little tidbits of goss as well. Go for it, Siddy. Yeah, okay. So here are some Aldwych photos for everyone to see. Can you see them? Yeah. That's the outside. There it is. And this is particularly lovely for me because to the right of it is my university, King's College London. So I was very, very close to that beautiful red archway every day. And there we've got some of the lifts, the beautiful wrought iron work on the, uh, at the top of it where, where you would have entered into the lift. That lift could have taken up to 40 people. Uh, a beautiful example of, uh, of Edwardian architecture, that. And there we've got the oh. platforms. And there's a little tube train standing there on the platform as well. Where's that? That's amazing. Now, this is actually a part of the station which is uh, completely closed. It's the former, well, what was intended to be passenger tunnels, but because the station was never fully uh, actually kind of finished, uh, these, this part of the station is, is completely closed. And there we've got uh, some of our, that's actually Jeanette who works with us standing in one of the corridors. And that's uh, Sean and I standing in, at the end of the Aldwych Tunnel, um, looking down at kind of the, the end of it. That is the, amazing. Thank you so much for that. Chris, going back to you, the history of this place, it's a very peculiar, um, area really for London Underground when you talk about Strand and you talk about Charing Cross and you talk about Aldwych and Embankment there's an awful lot of history at it but let's start with Aldwych what's the basic potted history of Aldwych station Chris? Well um, you, you started to ask me about the, the name of it uh, and originally it was opened as Strand Station uh, and later donated its name to, uh, to what we know today as Charing Cross Station very complicated renaming history on that the, all, all the stations with embankment strand trafalgar square um yeah um subject to a very good tour there um but um eventually it, it gave up its name and changed its name to oldwich now the name oldwich <coughs> is actually a portmanteau of two old english words um meaning uh, old village or old farm um, and uh, so that was the name given to the area when it was remodeled. It's really, it, it used to be a slum area 
um, that whole area around Kingsway, from Holborn through Kingsway down to Oldwich, is a, a real dodgy area of London uh, before it was transformed into the very grand, impressive buildings that we know today, like uh, Bush House uh, and the, the remodeled Oldwich Crescent there. Um, and the the history of the tube going there. Uh, was you know within that 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 point of the remodeling of the area um, it, to go to the, the question that we were asked in two parts there about why it's closed and why it's a very short branch it was intended to go further it was always intended that it would carry on and be extended underneath the river to Waterloo and uh, at various points in its history that extension was looked at uh, again, uh, and uh, because that didn't happen, that's ultimately the reason that the, the station closed because the, it, it never really got uh, the use, the, the traffic as it's known. And there's equivalent of about half a train of people used it every day when it eventually shut in 1994. It was incredibly quiet and, and early on in its history, um, two platforms were built, weren't they, at Aldwych? There were actually twin tracks going down from Hoban you say mm -hmm. Holborn, I say Hoban, we're going to need to call the whole thing <laughs> off. Um, but uh, it was two tracks from Hoban down to Aldwych, but very, very shortly after um, it opened City, they shut one platform, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, Aldwych is also one of my favourites because it was the first time I did some archival research for the Hidden London program. So back in 2015, I went to the National Gallery's archives and found a whole box full of memorandas and uh, all sorts of kind of, well, basically archive material uh, relating to the fact that the National Gallery stored uh, a lot of precious artifacts, basically, in that closed platform during the First World War. But yes, that platform actually closed very shortly after after um, after the station opened because it was only a shuttle service, a very short three car service that went uh, from Holborn down to Aldwych, and really there was no need to have two open platforms. So in order to cost uh, to cut costs, uh, they decided to close that platform down, and then conveniently that platform was then converted uh, and used for uh, as a safe storage. And it's quite a fascinating uh, story that we tell on our tours because you can kind of come and see some of those, well, basically those alterations to the platform. And, uh, and, and that's quite, quite fun. And it's sort of, it, it was quite sad really, Aldwych's life, because it, it never really got grand, did it? They took away the booking hall and they made the lift operator take the tickets or give you the tickets, and it all looks a little bit quiet down there. But strangely, these days, when you go down and visit that place, it is, there is a creaking antiquity about the place, which is an amazing. And actually, Laura, I was going to ask you, given that there is, there is a rumour that there is a ghost down there, have you ever felt scared in Aldwych? In Aldwych specifically? Yeah. It, do you know what? That's a tricky one because um, I'm a little bit of, uh, I, like, I like an urban myth, I like a little ghost story and we're really lucky in our, in our kind of role that we have the capacity to go into a lot of underground space um, and I like asking people that I meet if there's a little kind of ghost story or if there's anything spiritual there um, and I have had conversations with people about Aldwych and people have heard some singing. Um, I haven't myself but a lot of other people have said that they have. Um, but that there is something quite kind of unnerving when you are in a space where there, you know, that, that's kind of quite dark, you are underground, even if you know the layout pretty well, it can kind of catch you off guard sometimes when, you know, you see a flicker or, you know, you hear a door shut. Um, and that's definitely happened at Aldwych. Um, <laughs> but no, I've not heard the singing, but people have. So I'm intrigued by this. I think it's really interesting as well how we all know each other because Chris and Siddy wrote the Hidden London book that I'm sure so many of the people who are watching this now have read. Laura and I know each other for very different reasons because on so many occasions I've followed Laura and her high-vis jacket down platforms and had a look around these places myself which has been lovely and actually it's really interesting when you're somewhere where very few members of the public are perhaps places where members of the public were in huge number sometime and then you're there on your own. It is an incredibly eerie experience, an incredibly eerie experience for me, certainly. Um, 
the, the Aldwych tube station in the end met its maker in the summer of 1994, along with a couple of other parts of the tube that shut at the same time, Chris. It, it was quite sad when it finished, but now it's got a new life, hasn't it? It does. I mean, it's, it's an epic time capsule. Um, it's not just preserved in its state as it was in 1994, because as uh, Sidi alluded to, it's been used for so many different things uh, in, its, in its history. It also speaks of First World War use. It's used as test surfaces to model uh, other stations uh, like the, the refurbishment of Piccadilly Circus. Uh, and it's also used as one of the two principal filming venues for the tube. Uh, so it, it can take on an entirely new life uh, week by week as it's being used to film TV or, or, uh, or, or kind of Hollywood movie uh, stuff down there. So, um, yeah, it's a really vibrant station uh, with a continuously changing uh, look to it because of all of those contemporary uses for it. And I can be a complete geek and say this now because on the platform down there, there's an old Northern Line train dating back to 1972. And there is something really cool about when the lights come on on those trains and after all this time of being basically dormant, they come to life again. Yeah, it's a, it's a really unusual train, that one, uh, to, to survive in its original form down there. Uh, and again, it's there for, for use for filming. So if we need a train in shots, then uh, it, it can be there. But it's also really nice to be able to show it as, as part of the tour uh, and to listen, listen, listen to some oral history accounts on it uh, and so on. So yeah, it's a really important part of the station's fabric. Um, and it, it can shuttle between Holborn Platform 5 uh, and uh, the, the platform at uh, Oldwich. Um, one other thing just to mention about Holborn, of course, uh, it wasn't just Oldwich, which only had one of the two platforms in use. Holborn, of course, had platform five and six that was never uh, never actually finished or, or it, it kind of used in service. So, uh, yeah, there are a number of vacant platforms around the place. And joyously, uh, the London Underground Model Railway Club was on that dormant platform at Hoban Station, as yep. uh, as I saw when I went round there. It was amazing. Yeah, it's been a wartime bunker, a model railway club. There's no end to the ingenuity and reuse uh, for these spaces that uh, London Underground staff will uh, will find ways to use them. Chances are, though, there'll never be a return to use for Aldwych, will there? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think its its chance of that happening have have gone. Its last chance was in the seventies, uh, when the Fleet Line Jubilee Line was being uh, constructed. That that plan to take that line down underneath Fleet Street uh, included creating an interchange at Oldwich. Uh, when the Jubilee Line extension came along and diverted via Westminster and the Charing Cross branch was uh, was taken off the public route. I think that that really was it for for Oldwich. What a shame! What a shame! It will always be a it'll always I'll have a soft spot for Oldwich. It's a beautiful station and it's so so well preserved. If you get the chance to have a look around it, for goodness' sake, go because it's absolutely brilliant. Um, lovely stuff. Thank you, team, uh, for our little Oldwich chit chat. Um, amazingly, even though this is episode zero or episode one, as they call it in the trade, or zero, um, we've got we've got questions from the public who've been in touch to ask our wonderful experts. So we've got two historians, we've got Laura who just makes everything happen and you've got a nosy Parker like me who's quite well read and likes to poke around in dirty tunnels in tube stations. So let's see what we can find. First of all, Neil P11 on Instagram. I get the feeling anyone who knows anything about typefaces probably gets an idea that Neil P11 might actually be a bit of a tube fan. His question is, how often do the tube tunnels get cleaned and how do they get cleaned? What a question. Um, now, obviously, back in the day, they had to be cleaned manually by a team of cleaners that were actually called the Fluffers. Yay! Um, which is a, a very funny name to us, of course. But uh, they were essentially just teams of people with these brushes that would have to go and actually walk through the tunnels at night during engineering hours, kind of brushing the tunnels uh, and brushing all the dirt away. 
Of course, it's super important to clean the tunnels because uh, if you don't clean them, then there could be a potential fire hazard. So you have to make sure that they are actually cleaned very well. Um, today, in modern times, we actually have used technology to further us along uh, with this a little bit. And we have so-called uh, vacuum trains now, which kind of drive through the system and vacuum up the tunnels. Now, obviously, that takes quite a long time for each of the lines. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how often that happens. I would uh, imagine quite, quite frequently. But of course, there are also still some manual cleaning that has to be done in order to maintain the, the network and, and have it operate efficiently. I'm hoping that uh, they clean the tunnels more than I clean my oven. That's all I'm going to say, because my oven doesn't get that much of a clean very often. And it's interesting as well that when you look at the muck that actually accumulates down the tunnels, a lot of it is human hair. Because when you're standing on the platform and your hair's blowing all over the place, yeah, I'm so sorry, we're all losing hair all the time, and it ends up in clumps in tunnels, and that's why they have to clean it. It's fascinating. And yet, if you are interested in the fluffers, as they are called, there is an amazing documentary on YouTube. Um, it's called 40 Minutes. It's called uh, Heart of the Angel. And it's all about the very, very old Angel tube station and the cleaners who used to go down and clean the tunnels. It's amazing. Uh, go and check that one out. Um, another question um, from, from Neil. Um, when was smoking banned on the tube? I think this is another one for you, Sidney, isn't it? Oh, well, um, I can share it as well, but uh, so, we can't really imagine people smoking on the underground. I mean, we, we can't really imagine people smoking anywhere indoors now. Um, but uh, really, I mean, the underground is very confined and a confined space to do so. Um, they actually started out, uh, well, sort of banning smoking in 1984. So from 1984, there were only certain smoking compartments which you could smoke smoking um, but they actually started they rolled out a, a network wide ban on smoking in 1987 uh, and then only a few months after that there was uh, of course the very very horrendous King's Cross fire which just cemented that smoking did not belong on the underground and it has been banned ever since. Marvellous stuff thank you very much we've got loads of other questions coming in as well and what we'll do is we're going to save some of them for subsequent episodes of the Hidden London Hangout, if that's okay. So um, we've got them. We're just gonna feed them into different episodes. And um, one question that um, any of you can answer really, because you'll all know more than me. Um, this has come from Dan underscore Gooding on Instagram. And uh, this is, hello Dan. And uh, he asks, why are some signs with typeface quirks on the tube, like the Johnston Serif, left in place? In other words, when you look at the tube signs, some of them look a bit wrong. Why are they still there? Chris? Uh, okay, so um, there'll be heritage signs. So um, since 1994, uh, the, the tube has tried to preserve as much uh, heritage as possible. And where it doesn't cause confusion, that includes leaving some anomalies, so old bullseye round all signs uh, and things like typeface quirks are left out there. So although there is a style guide, uh, A5 ring bound document, which uh, advises designers on, on how they should, uh, yeah, uh, how they should apply the typeface, how, uh, how they should for example, use things like apostrophes um, and hyphens. Um, if there is a, an old sign which has survived, then uh, we choose to preserve that, uh, that heritage where it doesn't cause confusion. And it's why if you go, for example, somewhere like St. James Park, you'll see St. James Park and St. James's Park uh, and different typefaces used there. Uh, because whilst ever it doesn't cause confusion, it's nice to see that variety. It is, and it's lovely. I think it's West Brompton as well, isn't there, that's got the old, an even older font. It looks absolutely beautiful on the signs. And as you say, it's just nice for a bit of, a bit of colour. Um, we've got so many other questions, but time is rapidly beating us. And um, I, I, I'm going to chuck one more, just because it's thematic to what we've been talking about today. Um, we had a question about ghosts. And how many ghosts are there on the tube? Now, while we can't answer that question, there's a very interesting one about Oldwich and also Covent Garden, because right in the middle of central London, theatre land, I suppose, on the fringes, I think both have got a theatrical ghost. Is that right? 
there is some rumor to it. There's one called William Talley, uh, which is apparently the ghost of Covent Garden, who was an actor in Victorian times and who was actually uh, murdered on the on right next to the station. So there are some some who say that he haunts the the the, the Covent well, the the platforms at Covent Garden. Uh, now the other one is that apparently, according to some, there is a an actress that used to um, well. Uh, well, I mean, I guess act. <laughs> uh, they used to sort of uh, thread the, the, what am I trying to say? Tread the stage? Is that what tread I'm the about? boards. She was treading the, the boards. Board. Thank you. Thank you. Tread the boards uh, of the Royal Strand Theatre. Because the Royal Strand Theatre was the theatre that was demolished and all of which was built in its place. So there are some that say, that this actress haunts the, the halls of her former theatre that was demolished in the place of the station. Laura, did you ever give this uh, random actress a round of applause when you were down there sticking signs on the sides of the station? Do you know what? I'd have, I'd have loved to have, um, have heard it and I would definitely have given her a round of applause as well. But this is what I was alluding to before when we were chatting a little bit about Aldwych and the ghost and have I ever kind of felt a presence or felt, you know, it kind of be really eerie. And when I said that some people have heard the singing, that's exactly what I was referring to, what Siddy's saying there, that the actress kind of died on site and so her kind of, um, I guess her spirit is there and you can hear the singing and I haven't but I would give her a round of applause um, but other people have and I, I genuinely 100% believe that I know there's a lot of people that will think that, that I'm crazy um, but I think when you spend a lot of time in these spaces and you do kind of hear and see things you start to believe in different energies in different places so I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm just hoping that we get an encore actually for our hidden London hangouts because it's been great fun today talking to you guys and getting a bit of information about the London Underground. That's it for today from us. Thank you so much for taking part. Thank you for watching and listening and learning and we hope to be back very, very soon. Um, find us on Instagram, Alex Grundon, you've got City Holloway, you've got Chris Nix and you've got Laura Hilton Brown. Come find us, talk to us, ask us the questions that you want the answers to, and then in a subsequent Hidden London Hangout, we'll get you those answers. We've got some great things coming up as well. And then when time and circumstance allows, we'll have some great podcasts from locations all over the London Underground system. From me, Alex Grumson, and the rest of the team, have yourself a great day and stay safe. <laughs>